Hello, I'm Brett with WIPDeveloper.com. Since we've been taking a look at loading from static resources, let's take a look at loading a JavaScript library from a static resource. I've already created a Lightning Web component and built out some of the preliminary parts. I have a button that says build that when I click it, we'll call the build method. I also have a canvas because the library I'm going to use is a drawing library. So I have a canvas, I have a set height and width. It has the, the main thing to note here is that I have the LWC colon DOM equals manual so that the library will be able to manipulate the DOM of this element. And I gave it a class of build area. In our JavaScript file, we have that method called build already created. I also have already imported the uh, JS to load static resource and I've imported the test files because we're going to make use of one of the images that are in there. Right now I click build, nothing happens. And that is expected. First thing we're going to do is import the load script from Lightning Platform Resource Loader. So we've importing, we're importing load script from, and load script starts with a capital S. We're importing load script from lightning plat slash platform resource loader. And we're going to make use of that in our build method. Uh, we already have JS path assigned to JS path and test files assigned to test file path. And load image down here is a helper method we need for the library to access the image we'll use later on. When build is called, what we're going to do is use load script to load the library Legra from the static resource uh, JS to load. So first thing we need to do is get that so we get that started. So Load script method takes the context that it's supposed to operate in, so this, and then the path of the file. So, and the path in our static resource is going to be legra slash lib slash legra dot umd dot js. And that should look, be the correct path. Then, since this is a since this is an asynchronous method, we will call dot then on it. We will also call uh, have a catch method in case there's an error. Okay, so for our catch method, in case something goes wrong, we're just going to log it to the window console. In our in our uh, then method, we will access Legra from the context of window. So once load script loads this script, it should be added to the window object. So we can use window.legra to access it, or we can just use Legra um, without the window since it's implied. Let's just see if this actually loads it first. So. Okay, now when we look in our local development environment, we see that we are actually logging right here. If we put a breakpoint in, we see Legra is a class to be uh, used. One of the requirements of Legra, since we are using this, is to get that canvas element we created earlier. So let's start by getting that available. Here we have our build area defined, and we're using this dot template dot query spelled incorrectly. Selector get context two D to get the two D context of the canvas element. So now we can use this in our uh, returned promise to access the canvas build area, and with Legra make something happen. So. Here we're using Legra 
call it a new instance of Legra. Legra is defined as a class, so we need to call new on it. Um, there is a bug that Legra is defined as lowercase. Usually in JavaScript, when it's a class, it should be capitalized. Uh, that is not the case right now. So we'll just use Legra, a new Legra, pass in the build area that we got. That's the 2D context of our canvas element. And the second property here is how large we want the elements we're going to build with. Next, we call the builder and create a rectangle. It uses the start parameters of 12 and 2 and the end parameters of 8 and 8. So let's go look what, see what this looks like. And we have a rectangle. If we change it, so we can make it a little bigger to see. Close the console. We're not going to need that anymore. So there we have it. A rectangle that uses the Legra library to create what appears to be Lego blocks tops in a rectangle. We can make more than just rectangles. We can also use it to make additional items. So let's make some of those as well. There, we've got an assortment of objects that we've created. Once we deploy this to Salesforce, for fun, because why not? Here we can see that our brick design can be present in our Salesforce org, because it seems like a fun thing to do. The other thing we can do is, I mentioned an image earlier, so we can get rid of all this. We're going to use the Legger library to draw an image. The helper method down here, um, load image is async, so we have to specify build as async as well. There we go. Things formatted properly. Now we have our image loading up here after we get the build area with, um, with the path to the static resource that we want to use as our image. The load image method is just a helper method, so we have the image ready for Legra to use. And then we call builder.drawImage with our image and the start point. And it looks a little bit hard to see, so let's change the size of the bricks to 5. We're going to deploy this right now. There we have it our Legra library, creating using an image to draw a little block outline. And it still works in Salesforce. That's it for now. Remember to sign up for the weekly standup, and you can get updated with any new information we have on WIPdeveloper.com.